where we start with it, we can also see. Okay. So, Oriyashimas. Oriyashimas. So, just start a little bit loosening on the vertigo. Just kind of get a little bit into the body. Let's try if you can loosen all the areas of the body. And if you feel anything kind of tense in particular, or anything's kind of tripping out, just kind of work that area. For me, it's always kind of shoulders, but it might be a little bit different <clears throat> depending on what you've done in the day. Just kind of work it. Work the head a little bit. Play with passing the movement kind of out of the fingertips as well. So kind of just bring where kind of full feeling to the whole body. As you feel the body starts kind of loosen, just start to feel the kind of whole body now drain down through the ground. So feel the kind of weight really be received by the ground. And basically start to basically have the feeling like the, the feet are going to start to kind of sink, sink down, sink down, sink down. And then until they reach a kind of point where they're just kind of calm. And then the body's just going to kind of receive, or the feet are just going to receive the body. Down, down, down. Okay, and with this feeling now kind of sunk with the feet, just start to go into a forwards movement. Imagine you're kind of moving from the chest. So imagine the chest gets pulled forward, forward and backwards. The easiest way for me to think about this is if someone's pushing me behind and then to the front. So imagine I've got kind of two people. One's pushing me back and one's pushing me forward. So you get kind of sandwiched between two people. They're kind of pushing you and you're just going to kind of receive it and let the movement kind of pass down the body. We're going to focus a little bit on Ukemi today. So what I want to really focus on is this idea that the structure is going to be, the structure is going to flow down to the ground. So for when you do these kind of movements, sometimes I do these and kind of throw the body out of balance a little bit, which you can also do in this. But just a kind of emphasize the feeling that as you get kind of thrown out, or the body's coming out of structure, then you can kind of pass it through the lower body. So there's a kind of, not really a compensation, but a, a kind of fluid motion that goes through the body and kind of captures through the ground. And this is a way to basically absorb, receive through the body, the movement, and just pass it through back into the ground. Yes. So just play a little bit with kind of drawing the body out of balance. Just a little bit. Feel it to the back. And the main thing to notice, what you'll notice with Ukemi work is this fear. So the, the fear of falling is, is one of the, the biggest kind of hurdles to get over with Ukemi work. And it actually doesn't go away. We actually always have that kind of fear of falling. So what we do is try and work with it rather than try and ignore it. So in a sense, you want that, you want that reaction to kind of come online and you want to basically ride the wave out. I get unbounce one and just drop it down. And I don't want the body to really react with tension, which is the main thing that fear will do. It'll kind of tense the body up. Just feel a little bit, you can drop it. So just start to exaggerate it now, really working with the feet, the knees opening out. And if you can just start to kind of roll the body down a little bit to the ground. <clears throat> this is easier kind of to the front first. Just sweat. And just really feel the body's gonna get pulled out, pulled out and soften. So it gets drawn out, drawn out, soften. Just try to feel like this, I'm just gonna watch, so. Okay, good. Let's allow the body's kind of go down, that's it. That's it. Okay, good. Okay, good. So the one thing we're missing with online training for sure is pressure. So I need to basically, I need to apply the pressure to myself. So the, one of the problems with, with online training is that we can be too comfortable. So we're in our own comfort zone, we're in our own homes, everything's kind of fine and safe. And, and what happens is we do kind of things like this. Oh. Oh. And this is, this is fine, this is like loose and fine and great. And that's it's the space where you kind of work from. But eventually I want to go to a place where I'm actually, whoa, 
I feel like the body's actually get pulled out. So you basically got to do that to yourself a little bit. So feel the body actually now gets kind of pulled out. Whoa. And then feel what the body does. Feel what the reaction is to it. Now, from that kind of wool, I need to kind of soften. So just explore it a little bit, but slightly make yourself a little bit uncomfortable, which is kind of a hard thing to do, but it's really going a little bit. That's it, boom. <laughs> good. And just don't smack the, into the floor, but that was a good one. Yeah, good one. <laughs> perfect one, then. Just a perfect one, boom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The best way to do this is actually do it do it from a position that you're actually unfamiliar with, which for most of us is falling off a chair. So if you can do this, oh, sorry about that. If you can do this with a fin, that actually oh, I get thrown out of the chair. So actually, this will actually bring the fear on because I'll actually have the fear that like oh, the body's gonna actually go into tension. Oh, the body's gonna go into tension because actually it's it's. This is actually a familiar feeling because most of us probably actually fallen off a chair at one point in, 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 in your life. And the main thing then is to kind of feel it there and that you can soften out of it. So, so if you're playing with this at home or you're playing with this on your own in home, at home, just play a little bit with, I play with the sofa a lot. So, oh, sorry, kind of falling off the sofa, falling off different places, checking different angles and, and basically trying to try and induce this kind of um, pressure on the system is the best way to put it. Just kind of feel it, but you can do it to yourself. This is this this is the interesting thing. You can induce it, and the, the the really interesting thing is you do induce it. You do induce the fear in yourself. So the only fear that comes is the one you produce. So when someone's pushing you around, you're actually creating the fear. They're cre they're creating the kind of situation, but you actually put the fear in. So <clears throat> that's actually an interesting point. We actually do it to ourselves, but. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, now you're all kind of playing with it. Now, this is to the front, it's, it's actually quite comfortable. So play now with the feeling like the back or the side. And this is starts that the body will start to automatically block up. So it will start to now feel like, I go to the side of there. There's just a point where the body can't deal with the, with the direction. So just play a little bit and you get kind of drawn out. And it kind of drawn out, Ooh, drawn out. And then just see if you can, Take it a little bit too far and see what happens. Yeah. Just start quite slow with kind of small movements, but feel now the body will really not like this kind of movement. Yeah, 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 good. So you start to feel pretty uncomfortable. And uncomfortable is a very good feeling to, to have because it means there's some, you've got something then to work with. Yeah, good. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's perfect. Good. Great. Yeah. So the, the I think one of the problems we've got we've got with Ukemi is we've actually locked it into a form. So we've actually got a very, very, very useful skill in terms of softening the body and in taking impact and pressure. <clears throat> but we've locked it into a form. So we've locked it into forward rolls, we've locked it into backwards rolls, sideways rolls. <clears throat> and we've actually we don't know how to access the skill. So a lot of time when you get something happens unpredictable, some people will actually go, they'll find themselves actually, they took into a forward roll or something like this. So that the form's actually, the, the, the skill is actually locked deeply into a practice now. That's actually a good thing, but in a way you want to kind of unlock the skill a little bit. So, and I, and I basically do that with free form a little bit. So all of us have got, the, most of us have got the kind of form pretty tight. <clears throat> and for those that don't, it doesn't actually matter. Because it's actually a good way to start. I actually start practicing you can be like this with people, but just get this feeling now that you can slightly increase it a little bit more to the back. And then just feel what happens with the body. You'll automatically feel the body just locks up. Now, the, the, the more I can not, re, not resist that motion, go with it, join it, and then go with it. It feels a little bit weird. Again, it's a bit like this scene in Fight Club, kind of fighting yourself, but just, just feel it. It's very interesting just to play with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then the next point is if you look at most, the majority of the techniques, what they do is compromise the spine. So they compromise the structure of the spine. So if you think about the classic is Irumi Nage, and it basically is gonna really compromise the spine out away from the feet. And that's one of, that's one of the hardest techniques to, to deal with. The, the second one that people find really difficult is Shiho Nage, also because you've got the arm locked up. So they've got the arm, the arm lock and then they feel the spine gets drawn away from the body. And most people will freeze automatically at that kind of point. And that's when you get kind of injuries within the, in the dojo. So 
in this case, just feel a little bit of the muscle now kind of include the arm. Feel that the spine gets kind of compromised. And what I want you to do now is just slowly work your way into the ground. And don't do it in a kind of, in a way, don't do it in a kind of set way. Each one should be very different. Put the arm into a different kind of position. Feel the body gets locked, spine gets taken, and then just feel you can kind of drop, drop into it. A little bit this way. And just play a little bit with it. So you kind of have the, almost have the feeling like your arm gets kind of locked up. The joint gets locked. The spine gets kind of compromised. And then you're going to kind of drop into it. Again, it's kind of tricky to do, but you can do it. That's it, Petrus. Good. Tricky. Yeah. That's it. Good, good, good. <laughs> Like a sack of spuds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At the at the moment, see if see if you, what you what you're basically doing with Ukemi when let's say when when a technique is really applied. I'm just gonna put so I can see. If you say if you think when a technique is really applied to, which is away from these kind of big projection forms where you're kind of throwing the UK away. You will feel that the actual the technique crushes through the body, so that the technique in a way kind of go, 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 through the through the whole body. It's like a kind of crushing thing, and then it gets pressed through the ground. So in a way, what, what you want to do is kind of meet that crushing crushing feeling, and you basically I want I want to not have the structure be crushed. So I want to in a way let the crush happen, but I want to pass it through the body in a way where I can keep the joints free, which is super difficult. So just get the feeling now that, that you've got this kind of crush. Feel it a little bit like there's a kind of heavy wall gets kind of pressing down onto you like this. There's this kind of feeling. And then what I want you to feel is that you can receive that pressure down through the ground and softens it. So you're going to kind of, in a way, kind of corkscrew down to the ground. So I need to basically meet that force with a kind of spiral. So just feel that as you get kind of compressed down, whatever it is, feel that you can basically find the freedom in the movement, basically curl down to the ground. That's so, Pretty tricky, but just get this kind of feeling you're going to slightly have the body compressed. This is obviously work easier done with a partner, but again, you can just about do it to yourself. That's it. Ah, okay, good. Okay, and I, I, I say one thing that I'm noticing in general in terms of chemi work is we don't use the legs enough. So we don't use the legs enough to kind of find the ground. So, and again, I think it's sometimes it's locked. It's locked into this idea of the the is actually locked into a into a fall. So probably mostly when you started, I can go. Someone told you when you go back, drop the leg and drop down into it, and then do this kind of thing. So in a way, this is in a way to trick to, to to train the movement, but actually it loses all this flexibility in the. I end up like a kind of pogo, and then I kind of boom, fall down into it. And it's actually, it's not such a great way of falling into the ground. So what I want to feel is just emphasize the lower body, especially the knees, the feet, and really feel that everything's now mobile. So I just want you to play, forget the kind of ukemi work, but just play with basically coming down into the ground through the lower body this way. And you can come down just into any kind of sit position and just feel that you can really mobilize the lower body this way. So we have a kind of, in a way, a kind of poor relationship with the lower body. And most of us tend to go into a chemi in a way that's kind of throwing the upper body away. But really get the feeling that you're going to really, again, mobilize the lower body. So just play a little bit with the feet, the legs, <coughs> let everything settle down. You can go into any kind of sit position. You can come out to it in any way. But it's basically just sitting and standing. This will really force you to kind of we need to mobilize this whole area. We don't tend to do shiko a lot in the dojo. It's not a great practice for the knees, but it is a great practice for mobilizing the legs. So do it very lightly. Just really play with the lower body a little bit more. You really feel that the base of the upper body is stacked on top of the lower, and then the lower body releases it. So just give it a try. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And again, it's not really about a form. It's really about now mobilizing the lower body. So 
really experiment a little bit with it. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Great, okay. Okay, good. Now, I want you to really be conscious now of the spine as you go down. So as you, we, we also have a kind of bad habit in a way of going down to the ground, in a way of kind of, in a way that's kind of, uh, oh, yeah, this kind of thing. Which is basically over relying on the upper body to do it. So really feel, use the hands as a, as a use the hands as contact, but don't rely on them for, for weight. So a little bit like I, I was showing this morning, I don't ever want to lean on the, on the upper body. So if I'm leaning on the upper body and it goes, I basically fall through. So basically if I'm in those kind of positions, I always imagine someone's gonna kind of just kick the hand out underneath them. So if I'm relying on the hand for balance and someone wants to remove it, I just fall straight down into the ground. But if I'm really much, I'm using the hands as contact, but much of my weight is settled in the back now, someone's to sweep it, it's no problem. So I really feel now that the actual, all the weight of the body is going through the lower body. Whatever the position is, it's actually why I do a lot of these animal locomotion movements. But these kind of movements, they really teach you where the balance needs to be in being a human. And it needs to really be in the feet most of the time. Unless you're doing a handstand, but we don't tend to do lots of handstands in Aikido. Only very rarely. That's it. So I really feel like the upper body stacked onto the lower. Yeah. That's it, good. Okay, very nice. Okay. Okay, good. I'm just gonna go to the ground proper now. So we'll do a kind of this progression just working with a backwards roll. So we just saw basically like this. So I want you to just kind of have the legs pretty close to the body, kind of like in a butterfly stretch kind of position. Now, what I want to do is just watch the body. You're gonna, with the arms, kind of press them out to the back this way, and I want you to use, I'll show from this way, I want you to use the shoulders in this case as a guide for the spine. So as you go down, the chin's tucked, and then this way. So as you go, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of roll down the back of the shoulder blade. The worst thing I can do in this way is, is go onto the head as I do it. So as you do this one, just kind of roll back down, straight down the spine, not something we normally do. But feel like you can use the hands there, and then roll back this way. So you roll out, shoulders and then roll back like this okay just a few like this should be very easy and there should be no stress on the head at all so no none whatsoever nothing no part of the weight goes onto the head just there and there so back over and through that way that's it good just a few good ah Okay. Okay, good. So for me, this exercise teaches one fundamental thing, which is about extension in through the spine and length through the spine. So you if you think again about this kind of crushing thing with the spine, what happens in the roll is that you pull, pull the body into a kind of ball. So you kind of make the body into, make the spine into a kind of ball shape. Now, if you come out of the roll, there's a feeling of length in it through the spine again. So I want to go back to a kind of vertical. So I'm, in a way, I'm always looking to get back to the vertical. Now, the, the roll and the pressure, the best way to absorb it is with a ball shape. I mean, it's just logical. I don't want to absorb the fall with a, with a straight back, because basically that happens. So what I want to do is, is as the pressure's coming in, I want to curl up, a bit like a kind of, like, a, like an armadillo. They kind of curl up when there's pressure, and when they, when they feel the pressure's gone, they release and lengthen again. So really work on this. This idea is like a curl. Curl, 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 and then roll out, lengthen. And also what I'm doing here is working the hips as well. So there's a lengthen through the hips, curl through the spine, roll up. It's nice and slow. And again, there should be no weight on the head at all. And the hips just feel very, very loose towards the end. 
That's it. Okay, good, 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 good. That's it. Great. So you got this curling, lengthening, curling, lengthening. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. And again, one of the one of the fatal flaws I'll show you in, in terms of the kind of in this one is over reliance on the upper body. So just watch this. There's a tendency to do do the movement with the chest. In this case, really use the legs, the lower body, as you come to here. The legs, the legs kind of boom, pull through it. So the weight of the legs is what brings me up. So the weight. I think I really think about the back of the back of the uh, quads, uh, the back of the knees, and the uh, right to the back of the legs and the heels. So everything's going to kind of kick from the back. So that, and really for the lower body to the driver for the movement. Just a few more, few more, few more. And I just slightly emphasize the kind of for the the rolling back. That's it. Try and access the underside of the body. That's it. Good, Serena. Great. Good. Good. Okay. So we take this press a little bit further. <clears throat> what I want to do now is, is have the hands on the ground, so the hands going to touch, and all I want to do is just rock back and then rock forward. So you're keeping the hands down on the ground. It's pretty much the same movement. And I want to really feel that the body, the shoulders are now activated into the movement. Again, don't take this onto the head and the top of the spine. Just enough so that you basically got the whole the whole arm in contact with the ground. So you go down, contact, 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 run. And feel that the body's peeling out of the arms. So the, the contact goes from the fingertips to the palm, to the wrist, forearm, elbow, shoulder, and then out to the. So there's now a feeling of peeling from the arms. Peeling out of the ground. It's a bit like you're stuck in Velcro. You're kind of peeling the Velcro off. And then sticking it. And just keep the hands all the time in contact with the ground. The palms, the palms of the hand, if you can, keep them down. Weight it down. So what this practice is basically is, is, is a simplification of, I'm basically going to use the arms next as kind of train tracks for the body. So this is allowing the arms to start to activate and allow the body to later follow the arm, the path of the arm. Okay, good, 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 good. That's it. Good. Okay, good. So that's pretty much the same. What I want to do now is basically starting to activate the hips. So all the ones we've done now are up down through the spine. So what I want to do now, the same thing, keep the arms down. As you go back, I just want to start to activate the hips. So you're going to come back, hip, back, hip. And really feel now, again, you've got the arms coming, you've got the contact coming down through the arms. And now really feel the hips together with the feet, drive the movement. So more and more start to center the movement. Hands down, there. And start to feel more and more, you're gonna to start to spiral through the lower body. Spiral through that way. Just give it a try. That's it. Ah, good, 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 good. That's it. Very nice. It should be really smooth, smooth down, smooth up. And you're really maximizing the contact with the ground. Just feel the body softening in, softening out. Okay, good. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Super. Good. Okay, so this is a, it's a, it's a very, very slight progression. What you're going to do now is really follow down the arms. So I'll show you it. It's quite hard to, do, to explain. You're basically going to come here and then draw out towards one arm. So you go down, draw out to one side. So in this case, one arm's going to get kind of dragged up. I'm basically going to roll down, contact this way. Roll down, contact this way. So in this case, you're going to really feel down with the hands this way. Eagle down this way. So if I was working before in a really straight vertical, now it's like using two forty-five degrees. 
degree line. So you're going to roll down and roll back up. And just have the, the hand that's on the ground to so be dragged up. A very soft contact. And really trying to again activate the hips. Really let the lower body too. Draw the body up. Draw the body up. Draw the body up. That's it. That's it. So it's a little bit like the Yoko Okemi. You'll sometimes see in judo, but slightly different. That's it. Nice. Good. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Great. Good. Okay, good. So we tend to kind of start at this exercise when we do chemi work. And, and obviously, for me, you can break an exercise down much, much, much more. And we could break down even those sections right, really take them down much, much deeper. But in this case, just starting with, again with the hand contact. This is the base of it we, we do. The rolling down contact onto the other side and contact up. So now the body's going to stick to the vertical. What you've got from the last exercise is rolling, rolling down the arm. So contact, contact, contact. Back up, one side. Plank again, that side. Rolling that contact, contact, contact to the other side. Contact to the other side. So really now using the hand, linking it with the feet. All the time, driving the movement with the lower body. So really trying to feel the underside of the body this way. This, this is the place. Hello. Can I just ask um, about your breathing? I mean, when you start going back, do you breathe in or breathe out? You can. I'm, I'm a fan of natural breathing, so I'm, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of telling people not to not to not breathe. So if you're holding your breath, this is bad. This is kind of the wrong thing you want to do. But you can actually do both. What I what I prefer to do is as I go down, breathe out. This is basically this is expanding the lungs. So I'm, I'm basically creating a bigger kind of serves so an expansion. If you get thrown quite hard and you breathe out as you get thrown and you empty the lungs, you get a kind of boom, slam through the body. You can actually, you can really, um, what do you call it? You get, you get breathless. So, so basically the, the, the body, the body basically gets boom, impacted through. So I, I think of it like in this sense, I'm going to breathe out as I go down, which is kind of softening the lungs. And at the same time, it's kind of expanding. And then as I come up, I'm breathing in. Okay, thank you. Just but really just experiment with it. The, the idea with the breath is that it's united to the movement, so it should feel, which is a kind of a cop out, but it should feel natural with the movement. But as long as you're not holding the breath, this is the main thing. But I prefer to breathe out as I go down and breathe in as I come up. That's it. Good. Super, super, super. Good. Okay, good. So I would normally turn this kind of progression into, into a full backwards roll, kind of a flipping over. So, but because a lot of it are pretty hard floors, it's not actually an ideal fall, fall to do. Well, not ideal. It's not, it's not the best thing to do. So what I want to do is just start from a standing position. And you're now going to do this. You're going to go down. Let me sit down into it. Again, use the hands. Roll down. And then I just want to stand up. From this way. So I just want you to kind of get this feeling of softening into the ground. You're going to extending up and then fully extend the body up so that you're standing up. And you can do this in any way you like, but just keep this basic where you're basically going to go down, find the contact, roll through it, find the ground, find the feet, raise up. So just make it as kind of natural and as easy as possible. So very low impact you can be. Perfect or very hard floors. And just kind of working with this idea of flexion, extension, curling the body, lengthening the body. So we're really looking for the balance as you do it. Just play around with it a little bit. 
Ah, okay, good. Oops. <laughs> yeah, and you might find sometimes your body just goes back. It just goes back all by itself. So just kind of ride that, ride that movement. If it happens, just go with it. That's it. Okay. So I'm a fan of breaking movements out. I'm also a fan of really elongating them out. So what, what we tend to rush, we tend to it tends we tend to rush the things we don't like. In, 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 in Aikido, in life in general, but we tend to rush the things that we're not so sure about. Oh, I'm getting up and I think, oh my God, man, I gotta come there very quick. So, so the, just notice there's the points where you basically slow, the, where you basically speed up. Those are kind of points that the body's kind of telling you I'm probably not so comfortable. And the body wants kind of run, do, just get it over with quick. But really feel that you can lengthen all the movements. Lengthen, lengthen. Lengthen them. Yeah. And let's kind of slow the more control I've got over the movement. The more, the more I can stop kind of change. That's it. That's why I'm not really a big fan of form training. No, I'm not a huge fan. Of, that's the wrong way to say. It. Form training has its place, but form training makes us a bit kind of unconscious through movements. We just kind of repeat a form, which is nice in a way, but Sometimes you need to really, in order to make change, get out of the form. That's it. Really slow, slow, slow. Good. Last thing, I want you to try this practice. This is, I the camera a little bit. This is working when out with a wall. If you've got a wall, you can do this without the walls. The walls are not actually important, but this gives you a bit more feedback. So what I want you to do now is really so that you push into the wall and you've got this kind of foot reverb, reverb back. So you've got a kind of strong push in and then feel the body gets long back. Now what I want you to do is just feel that basically, what I feel with this is like I'm in contact with the wall and the wall pushes me. So what I'm trying to do is, is imitate my partner pushing me back. So I want you to feel like this, 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 this happens to the body. And then what I want you to do is come into the wall and then boom. And then just take whatever roll you can. If you've got a very hard floor. Again, just do this one. So now you're basically providing your own pressure, but the wall's going to give you the, 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 the feedback forward. So just feel that you can basically come into the wall and soften it. Roll down and just come up with it. Okay, so just play with this a little bit. If you've not got a wall, you basically just imitate it, but I think most of you probably have. Let me see. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, good. Good. First first point, I'm gonna stop you before you before you carry on. Just watch this. There's a really key point in the chemistry work that I don't separate and then roll. This is actually, if you think about it, ukemi is not really about escaping. So a lot of people do ukemi in a way that I escape and then I try and roll from it. If you think about true, true ukemi and a true technique, we'll actually just compromise the structure totally. So there's no possibility to escape. So all I can do is receive it, which basically means following the, following the path of the, of the strike. So what I want you to do now is really feel that you don't go anywhere. So I can actually do this in a way where I'm staying really in contact with the ground, but just watch for doing this, and then this. This is actually, oh, I won't say it, but I see this a lot, in, and also in instruction videos. When people get pushed, they actually escape, and then they fall. But really try and get the seamless where I actually receive the push straight through into the ground. So it's much more close, it's much closer. It's much more compromising on the structure. Yeah, 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 good. Ah. Ah. Okay, good. Yeah, this, the second point, again, it goes back to the, the, the point that I was making before. We tend to over-rely on the upper body. So what, ha what happens here, I basically, I get pushed, and then I feel like I need to adjust the upper body. But if I go with the upper body, I'm actually, I'm actually breaking the structure more. 
So if I try and roll uh, with the upper body, I'm basically breaking the structure. So really feel that what, what happens here, what happens here in the upper body gets broader. So I'm trying to absorb, I'm trying to absorb the force through the center. So try and feel like this happens and then boom, the body's actually gonna go boom, spinal, this kind of spinal wave stuff's really important because you've got this and this. Well, that, what I need is the structure to kind of receive it. Otherwise the upper body tries to do it. And this will always kind of catch me out. Just feel that you can, whatever happens to the upper body gets absorbed through the lower. That's it, Serena, good. Good. Very nice. And really just play with the wall a little bit. This is really, the wall's totally patient, so you can really play with it all day. So really great partner. Doesn't complain, doesn't get tired. It's really great. Yeah, 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 good. Super. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. So you find it's much more about connection now than about kind of escaping and falling. So it's actually your chemistry has nothing to do with falling. It's about really receiving pressure through the system. Yeah, good. Nice, Keith. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Great. Very nice. Very good. Great. Okay, good. So with that kind of softness, what I want to do is, is go to a little bit of taijutsu work. So we'll just look at very basic tiny henko. So just let the body kind of settle for a little bit. Just kind of relax, release the body down. Feel the same kind of tension, probably in the shoulders a little bit, maybe the neck. Just feel the kind of body's going to kind of settle down a bit more. A bit more. And then just feel that you can kind of come into extension, reach out, reach out to the ground. And then just we're just going to really break it down. So really dropping the body in, finding the center line. And then just come in through with the extension and then just drop it back. So each time just change in size, but just in between, let the body just settle. Yeah. Reach out, find the extension, sink in, find the center line, and then roll in, find the back. And then just drop it. Each time just really relax, drop it. Extension, center line, rotation. And then drop it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Mm. Okay, good. But just, just watch one thing. When I'm trying to uh, try and I'll really emphasize it, but just watch for this as you, as you go in. When I want to maintain the extension, where I really want to feel that the body's dropping, sinking down. So you've got this and this. The body's really going to sink into the movement. So I know Saito Sensei also used to, used to do this kind of method where he kind of moved the foot in, turn the hand, and then kind of twist the body. In. Now, what I want to do in this case is feel that the whole body from the axis of the center is going to roll in. So feel that the, 
the back foot doesn't move. This way, just sink through into it and feel that the whole body's going to pop, 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 sink down. So again, I was looking a little bit this morning, but really break the movement down a little bit. We tend to do kind of move basics. Um, and the way we do basics is actually far from basic. So really look at the basic in terms of really breaking it down. Ah, this kind of movement. Ah, this kind of movement. And the more I can get the body to settle down, release, the much more heavier it will be, the much more effective it will be. So really just look for this kind of quality where you're draining the body down. Ah. Again, prioritizing the lower body over the upper. It's not a hand technique, it's a body technique. Ah, this, and then ah. Your body's going to rotate through it. So really feel free to kind of break the, te pe break the technique down a little bit. Okay. Good. Nice. That's it. Okay, good. So Ikea sometimes kind of seems like it's a kind of gentle art. It's a very round art. We do lots of circular movements, lots of spiral works, very nice, looks beautiful. But in essence, what, you, what it's all about is like taking the center line and keeping it later. But in terms of in terms of Tiny Hanko, what you really need to do is really take the center line. So in a way, I'm really moving the whole body in to steal the center line. So while I'm not taking it away from the person in Tiny Hanko, what I am doing is really establishing myself in the center. So what I need to do is really go in with a sense of through softness, really important, but I really need to go in with a sense that I'm gonna take the center line. And then once I've got it, I just blend into it. So Tiny Hanko is quite an interesting technique that we don't really do anything with it, with the center line. But I really need to feel that I really establish myself into the center and then roll through it and keep it. So we, we tend to be quite soft in terms of doing Aikido, but the mentality in Aikido is actually quite, it's quite straight. It's quite piercing. So it's got this quality where I'm just going to take it. So I'm just going to take it and I'm going to take it with softness, but I'm still taking it. So it's still an idea to take the center line later. But right now you're kind of just blending into the center line. But it's really, it's really, it's really important that I really go into the center. I'm yes, not kind of skirting really. around the outside, really into the center, into the center. Michael, are you talking about your center or the other person's center if you're doing partner practice? Ah, it's, it's the, 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 the center line is with a partner is between the two of us. So it's, it's the center line is basically what's established between the, the interaction between us. So I'm basically taking my center line into that point. If you think about in partner in partner interaction, the center line is basically where the attack is or the, the point of attack. So what I need to do is basically draw the center line into that. So I need to basically bring my center line in. And in Tiny Hinko, all I do is basically revolve around it. So in a way, it's just a practice of finding the center and then kind of keeping it. But in, in, in a kind of interaction, it's, it's a bit clearer, but you've got basically the, the, the center lines between the two. Okay, thank you. And basically you're bringing your center line into it. Ah. ah, yeah. And then the mistake is we do this. So this is why we actually skirt around it because we're not actually sure how to bring the center line in with softness. So we actually do it by pulling it. And we're, this is what you'll find straight. This is why actually why my teaching is good because we usually tell people to grab really strong. So it's actually impossible to try and take the center like this. So sometimes in other styles, you'll actually see this happen. This happens and then they bring it back. But actually, you will, you will never be able to bring it back because the, what, if you don't have the center line, you can't, you can't just bring it back. So really feel in this case that there's a softening that happens. So for me, your chemical practice is really essential because what it does is it teaches the body how to soften under pressure. Now, if you think about it, you've got the same dynamic. I've got pressure, someone's grabbing my arm and I need to soften through the movement. So really feel that the whole body can soften into it. Soften into it and then basically keep it. But there needs to be a, a softness to it, otherwise it's gonna, you're basically gonna clash or you're gonna pull. So, try and basically use this, the Yukemi train is really essential, I think, for unlocking Ikea. So there's a softness as you go in. 
Yeah, 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 good. That's it. That's it. Great, great, great. So just work it now, best is one movement. So again, do nothing, find the extension, and then feel that you can just soften the whole body up through the movement. Now the movement naturally just gonna, it's just gonna kind of find a bit more of a circular pattern. It's gonna have much more of a feeling of uh, this kind of feeling. But still the core of the movement's actually the same. The base is really the same, sinking in, coming together this way. It's just kind of now, it's basically stitched the whole movement together. So it's now just gonna kind of blend all into one. So this, 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 and then soften. The key thing with kind of slow work again is really heaviness. So a quality where I can feel the body's really heavy, dropping into the ground, heavy, 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 through the whole thing. Let's try a few, just like, just play with the movement again. See if you can find this very slow, very heavy quality through the movement. And that's it. Good. That's it. Very nice. Good. Okay, great. So I'm going to do, we, we can look at Morotador, but in, in a way, Morotador is, is, is really, not, in a, not that it's specifically for partner work, but in a way, it's a really great technique to go from in partner work because you're basically really working against someone who's got everything on, on one arm, on one side. So it's, in a way, it's, it's a way to kind of blend both sides of the body together. So in solo work, what I find actually much more helpful is, is to think of the Riotadori form. So in this case, I'm going to work with this form. So I'm going to work with this, this way. Now there's nothing wrong with the Morotador. You, you can do the same thing, but the tendency is to kind of focus on one side and kind of do this way. So in this way, just to give the second hand really something to do, what I want to do is sink in this way, sink in this way. So the hand's basically doing the same as the tiny hand work. And then what you're going to do with the opposite hand is draw it up. Yes. And then what I want you to do is, what you're going to do that's different now from the tiny hand is you're going to draw the back foot in this way. And I'm going to rotate to face the back. So if I'm facing the front here, what I do is now really rotate to face the opposite way. So it's really a change in perspective here. So just focusing on that very first, that, so just that motion. And you can do this both sides. Yes. I usually find it easier just to do a few on one side and then change it. So as you wish. All right, just try and find now this kind of spiral. And it's a good double hand movement in this case. That's it. Okay, good. Good. That's it. Okay. And in a way, what I'm doing with the body is a little bit more vicious now. So Tana Henko's got this very, very, very round kind of soft quality. When we're going to techniques, you need to, in a way, you need to kind of pierce into the body with the, with the center. So there's a, there's a bit of a feeling now of kind of kicking through the, through the system. So there's a feeling now that, that this whole body does this. So there's a feeling that I want to hit the handle, bam, do this. And I want the person to feel like this, this. And then I want them to feel what this. So in a sense, if I do it nicely, they've got a, they've got a, they've got a chance really to just reabsorb it. Through the body, but what I want to feel that what I want them to feel is boom, the structure's been compromised, and then around they get drawn out this way. So really feel in this case that you're actually kind of penetrating in around this way, and then what you do is boom, rotate it out this way. So again, it's a kind of heavy quality in the body, but there's much more now a sense of kick in the movement this way. 
So it's kind of that around, kicking, uh, that around, kicking the movement. But it's done in a spiral, so it's quite a soft move. But the intentions really to kind of compromise the center of the other person. That's it, nice. Good. Ah, good. <laughs> right. yeah. Good. Okay, good. And again, it looks like a hand technique. So actually, and a lot of the time when, when teachers show it, it probably is, so, and when I do it as well, so it's like, tends up, they tend to look like this, gung, gung, like this. I really feel it's actually the center doing the kick, gung. So the fin's like, gung, 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 gung. I want the center to go, gung, bam. It's the same with anything, the, the sword work, striking, bam. I want the center to, the center to do the kick. So I really feel that in this case, the center kicks, kick, kick, gung. So it's the center doing the, this. And then from this position, what I want you to do is go into the second move. So you've got this, and then really feel the ground the front foot, and then bang, open it out, and then drop it down. And really emphasizing the upwards motion. So you know, sink in, sink in, sink in, sink in, and then bang, explode out bang, to the back. And then bang, let the hands drop down. That's it. Okay, good. So what we, what we tend to do is emphasize the throw. So we tend to come in here and then boom, then the throw like this. In this case, just, oh, just slightly exaggerate the second move. So I come in and I really feel like oh, this. So this, uh, there's a really now an emphasis, this, 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 uh, this, and then this. And this, 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 Saito Sensei has said in one video, he said that the technique, the movements of the technique are very severe and that the throw can be very light. So he says this in terms of Shionagi, because a lot of people come through Shionagi and then bang, yank the technique on. But Saito Sensei actually said the technique's already over by the time I'm here. The technique's already finished. So just think in this case, it's like the, the, the technique is actually quite severe. This, this, and then the soft can actually come at the end. So you go back to a kind of softness in the end. So this and really feel you kind of run, center, center, run, center, open, bang, bang. and then from here, rah, draw it out. So just slightly exaggerate that second move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. That's it. That's it. Nice. Okay. That's it. Good. Okay, now just go to a kind of soft, fluid form. So take in a way, in a way, take the focus out of it, or take the kind of kicks out of it, and really just look for now something much more fluid, something kind of soft. I want to feel a little bit in this case like a kind of freight train. So it's kind of slow. This kind of slow, 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 but unstoppable. So it's really slow, heavy, but you just can't stop it coming in. So in a way, I want to just set the technique up. So it's just in a way kind of undeniable. You just can't stop it. It's got that kind of quality to it. So once you kind of start the movement, it's just going to kind of build, build, build towards the end. That's it. Nice. 
Okay, and we'll look a bit, just to, just to finish, we'll look at these kind of last two levels. So once you go into fluid work, you can, you, so a lot of the techniques you can basically split into two categories. So you've got long form kinetogaric forms and short form kinetogaric forms. So in this case, the long form is a really, a really beautiful technique. You basically roll into it this way, roll into it, coil into it, and then coil it out. So in this case, it's really a feeling of flowing around the person. Not a very practical solution. For technique, but what it is is, a, is an elongated connection through the body. So just focus now on so circling in, circling in, holding it, circle, 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 and then draw it out this way. So basically, you're really going to elongate the technique now. Much more rotation. So not so often we do these in the dojo, but they're quite nice movements to kind of get rolling, 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 rolling there. And again, really emphasize the lower body. Every the, the, everything that changes now is with the lower body. The hands are basically going to do the same thing. All the changes now in the in the footwork. Ah, interesting. Ah. Okay, and there's one fundamental change with this, which is slightly different. So if you, if you imagine the person's coming in, what I need to do is join their movement. So if you imagine they're coming in quite quite uh, aggressively, what I need to do is basically join that movement. So in this case, what I can't do is rotate out to the back. Because if I rotate out to the back with this one, they'll basically separate and spin out. Or they'll just rotate around, turn around and strike you and hit you in the face more likely. So what I need to do is basically as I come around, join the movement forward and join it, block it, block it, block it, block it, and then boom, join it forward. So this technique works as long as I can basically join the movement. But think about we've got a forwards motion coming in, and I rotate into it, and then I join it this way, and then bang, I join it out this way. This is the same as the Tainahenko form we do when we do full key and a guy form. You do this, this, and then this. So the front hip stays forward. Cytosense shows this really beautifully, so you can watch a great video of Cytosense they do it. Just see if you can join it. That's it. Nice. Ah, oh, yeah, tricky, 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 tricky. That's... Okay, and just the last few with this one, really imagine what you're gonna do is coil, coil, coil the body in and then release it out. So because you're kind of lengthening, what you're actually doing is lengthening the spiral work in the body. So. Really feel that in this case, you're going to coil, 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 and then open it out. And that footwork is really cool, but the quality of, of kind of coiling through the body more, 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 more. It's like opening a screw into a bottle of wine. You want to really get, 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 get all the way down, bam, and then you can pop it down. But I guess you need to coil, 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 coil and then open it out that way. But just to emphasize that kind of moment. Very nice movement to do with the body. Very, very nice. Nice, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. That was good. <laughs> Boom. This is a great one if you can pull this off with the nuke. Total shocker. Good. Okay, good. We'll finish with the last form. So that the, the, if you think about the kinagai, you can break them down into long form kinagai work and, and short form kinagai or, or direct form. And for direct, because the, the techniques are themselves very direct. So what you do now is very different. You just start here and then you just run, coil the body in this way. So you start here and then you, all you do is basically run this way. So this is a, this looks very direct and it looks quite aggressive and in a way it is. But what you do is still work with the spiral. But it's basically unlocking that spiral out. So now I'll show from the front this way. What people tend to do with this is kind of straight in. So I want you to feel that you can coil this in, coil this in, coil this in, and then come through this way. I actually learned this technique through a, through a different line in a Tamiki school. And they do a very, very aggressive form of this movement. And they actually do it underneath the arm of the, the UK. So you basically, in, in this case, what they taught was to really come underneath, bam! And then the, the hips, the legs, everything enters underneath the person's body. 
So they end up with the, with you stuck underneath the arm and you get thrown totally over the hips. So I actually learned this form in a very nice way. Very, very, very nice. But the way we do it is slightly different, but the intention's the same. Yeah, 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 that's it. Okay, good. So really feel now, I, I think the, for me, this really feels like a kind of jaw work. So it feels like a kind of lens, kind of spear through. So it's got this kind of quality. So if you think about it, this is the same as if, if I learn a punch, you learn with very big, clear movements, like this kind of, these kind of cats are very slow, all this kind of stuff. And then what you do is you do it from a position which is nothing and you just strike into it. So that the, the thrust comes from, as if the thrust comes from nowhere. So in this case, we do the same thing. We start from a very clear position. We learn a very clear basic, lead the hips in, blah, 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 do all this kind of stuff. And then it, essentially in the end, all you're doing is translating that into, into a movement straight directly into the hand. But it's got all the quality, so it's just kind of compressed into it. But really feel, in this case, it's almost like a kind of shock to my own system. Just, oh, explodes out and then comes through it this way. So just the last, last few. This is a really good cocky nugget. Very good if you pull this off in the G was it. No one expects it. Straight in the face. Bam. Great to pull off first time. The person comes in charging, you just bam, straight into the Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Great. That's it. Very nice. Very nice. Good. And again, it looks like a hand technique. So there's the last few. Where I want to really take it slow and really feel that you've got a quality where the lower body is also really entering. So just finish the last few. I'm, I'm also a fan. If I look at karate as well, I'm a fan of karate because they, they use kind of long stances. We, we tend to in Aikido use a very natural stance, which is where you want to go in the end. But also feel that you can, in a way, just slightly open the stance out a little bit. And this will really force, reinforce that the, the lower body needs to really open and, and move through the through the whole movement. So just the last few really feel. You can also go back to the basic. Just work through the different levels, rotating, full kind of kinagai, fluid form. But just feel that everything's going to now come out from the center. So try and minimize the work of the hands and maximize the work of the center and the lower body. Really feel this kind of deep, deep, deep connection down. Ground, 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 boom. And start that everything to kind of emanate out the center. Oh, that's it. Just the last few, just really, really slow. Very, very slow. And again, the quality of slow training is the heaviness. So just So you can just unlock a kind of heavy quality. Don, don, don. That's it. Super, super, super. Good. Great. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so we'll stop there. So this is a, a little bit of ukemi work. And again, for me, the, the ukemi work is really essential in teaching a kind of soft quality for the body and training it really in a way that trains it in a way that's that's in a way long lasting. And you'll also feel the people that do ukemi, do, that do Aikido for a long time and done real real good ukemi, that this quality just, just passes through the, the, whole of, the whole of the system. So you get a kind of real kind of soft quality. And the key for us is the softness is generated against pressure or with or training with pressure so it's really important when we take the company that you're actually getting real genuine pressure through the system so and then you can learn to soften and then you basically use that soft quality into the into the through the techniques so okay okay we'll stop there so we finish yes hi tomo arigato gozaimashita tomo tomo arigato gozaimashita great thank you michael Thank you, Michael. Oh, See you tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Michael.